All right, I just want to do a quick introduction to a uh, message that I'm going to be putting on here, a recording, an old recording from an old tape that I had. Um, this basically is a professor. His name's Alex Underwood, and he was a professor at Tennessee Temple University, and he was fired from there because he believed the King James Bible was perfect, because he's a Bible believer. Some called him a Ruckmanite, okay, because he went and he committed the horrible sin of actually going to see Dr. Ruckman preach. And because of that, he was fired from the Bible College there, the Tennessee Temple Bible College. Okay. Um, so this, uh, some of this talk that you know is on, on YouTube here and that you'll get from the Alexandrian cult is they'll say that the King James Only movement is a cult. Uh, no. Okay. Um, we will read other materials. You've seen me with my other Bibles and things like that. Uh, we're not the cult, okay? But the New Versionists, you go to some of these New Version churches, they will not even allow King James only type materials into their churches. They are the cults, okay? And a quote-unquote Bible college that would fire one of its professors simply because he believed the King James Bible was perfect and he, because he went to see Peter Ruckman uh, that's a cult, okay? A cult, not O cult. Let me define that. So here's the recording. I'm going to put, he has another message where he gets into more detail. I'm going to put that on our sermon audio account um, so you can hear it there. It's like 45 minutes in length, so I didn't want to split it up into little, you know, three parts or something here on YouTube. So the full thing is, is at sermon audio um, of another message that he did. I'm going to put the link to it down in the, in the description area there so you can go to listen to it. So um, I'm going to be putting up some screenshots too of Tennessee Temple University's current website. Okay, and you aren't going to believe some of the stuff that they have on there. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoy the recording. Now I send this because I am presently no longer employed on the faculty of Tennessee Temple. And I thought I might send this to you and let you know just exactly what happened to me and know how it came about, although we talked about this uh, when we went out to eat and fellowshiped together down at Brother Dave Reese's. And I remember you telling me then that, that uh, I would not last at the school believing the way I believe. Well, uh, you're more of a prophet than I gave you credit for. But uh, basically what happened, I related to you down at Brother Dave's, of course, uh, how that they called me up before staff about two years ago because I believe the King James Bible. And I told them then that I believe it was perfect and without proven error, and that's where I stood, and they just about went bananas, as the modern phrase goes. And, of course, tried to put me down and tried to... Uh, say now you have to watch out for Dr. Ruckman he's a mean nasty old man he's divorced which has nothing to do with Bible belief and every argument I know you've heard against yourself and other people brought up trying to persuade me to watch what I was doing so uh, that came to pass and then the following summer, which was last summer of 78, you were at Brother Dave Reese's, and I came down to hear you, enjoyed some of the greatest preaching I've heard. We had good fellowship, played softball. We just had a, a big time in the Lord. Uh, no, no problems whatsoever. And, of course, when I got back to camp, it was about two weeks uh, back to camp, uh, back to school. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was in boot camp. But uh, when I got back to school, about two weeks later, Dr. Affman stopped me in the dining hall and asked me personally, he said, now, did you go down to Brother Reese's church? Well, of course, he knew that I went because Dave and I are good personal friends. And uh, he gets your newsletter every month, uh, which I'm sure is a real thrill to him. But uh, I said, yes, I did. And he just blew his stack. He said, you are disloyal to the school, disloyal to me, disloyal to all your friends by going to hear a man like uh, me no Dr. Ruckman. Well, uh, of course, uh, I don't know how much loyalty to the school and friends 
comes above loyalty to God and his word, but evidently to Dr. Affman, uh, it comes far above it. So uh, I let it ride. Well, evidently Dr. Affman either went to Dr. Robertson personally or went to Dr. Faulkner, his Bob Jones uh, cohort, uh, which I'm not saying anything against the men. I have nothing against them personally. But uh, evidently uh, went to them and, of course, told them what happened. And uh, a couple of weeks after that, Dr. Robertson stopped me outside a faculty meeting and asked me personally if I went to hear Dr. Rudman. And I said, yes, sir, I did. He said, now, I want to tell you something we don't believe here like Dr. Ruckman believes, which stunned me. I wasn't really sure how to take uh, the quote. But uh, he says, now, you're going to have to make up your mind where you stand. Well, that summer, uh, I finally made up my mind. I told my wife, now, as long as I'm at Tennessee Temple, it's Dr. Robertson's wishes for me not to go hear Dr. Rudman. I believe in being submissive to the authority of you. So I told my wife I would not. However, I told her at the same time, I will not bend one ounce on my belief in the King James Bible. If it costs me my job, I will not back down. Now, it's one thing to shoot your mouth off. It's another thing to back it up when the chips are on the line. So all through the fall, no problem. I stuck to my beliefs, I preached it, I taught it. I taught some of my kids in health class uh, when we would come across uh, some things, or like in human sexuality, we were talking about childbirth, and I mentioned the passage in Matthew 125 where uh, Mary gave birth to her firstborn child, and I refuted the New American Standard Version of the perpetual virginity of Mary. And ever so often, the Holy Spirit would give me some gems in the class to refute out of the New American Standard. So uh, everything seemed to go well up until about the, f oh, the 1st of November. Now, by this time, uh, two men especially, uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> one Dr. Affman, the other Dr. Roger Martin, John R. Rice's son-in-law, uh, but especially uh, Dr. Martin began to make vicious, outright attacks on the King James Bible in class. Of course, he is a New American Standard man uh, to, the, to the T. So uh, this began to infuriate a number of the Bible school boys, and so bad that some of them were very ugly and arrogant in the class. Now, I don't completely agree with that. I think a man should be refuted in a, a gentlemanly manner. But, uh, I mean, just they were just belligerent in class. So a number of them decided to drop out of Tennessee Temple. I think two of them were going to come down to your school. So anyway, uh, they went to Dr. Faulkner about it, and he suggested they go see Dr. Lackey, the dean of the Bible school, about it first. So they did. And Dr. Lackey drew up a petition, which he and I believe Mr. John Economitis and maybe Mr. Hartley uh, Brother Economist and Mr. Hartley, good men. I think they're, in a sense, the silent believers in the King James Bible. They do not stand outwardly make an issue out of it. So uh, anyway, they brought a petition before staff, the staff that I was called up before to give my beliefs on. Dr. Lackey told Dr. Robertson that we need to have a stand, an official stand of the school, as to this Bible issue because it's becoming such a boiling pot that we need to do something. So this brings us to the point of Dr. Robertson's message in chapel, which I think if you have heard, uh, affirms his stand on the King James, but very weak, leaves many loopholes to using other versions, and uh, which eventually, of course, <coughs> uh, they would do away with especially if Dr. Robertson dies, but eventually they will get a foothold again, and uh, it'll be back to the same old story. Now, you've been through it for years, so you know how it goes. Well, after that chapel message, uh, I met with Dr. Robertson to explain uh, why I was absent from a church service on a Sunday night. And uh, I was, because I was grounded in Atlanta, well, I wasn't grounded in Atlanta. I was up over Atlanta, and we couldn't get down on the ground because of a storm and fog. 
But uh, I went by and explained. So after his message in chapel, which I hope you have a copy of him listen to, I said, Dr. Robertson, I said, I'd personally like to thank you for what you said in chapel. I said, I'm not against the school. I'm not against any man here. But you know how I believe in King James, and we've talked about it. But I said, what you said today I think will help some kids to stick with the King James Version simply because you told them to. Now, that's not really good enough because the devil, just because a man says to, the devil can drag a person away and weaken them. And they, they won't stand just because some man said so. But I said, I appreciate what you said, and I did. And I said, now, I know there are some disagreements here, and I disagree with some men very belligerently. I don't think belligerent was a word I used, but very uh, harshly. But I'm not against any man personally. I love every man the Lord, and I do, and I still do. And uh, I mentioned Dr. Martin's name. I said I think some bad things were said by him, but I said I think the students did some wrong too, and I, I think what you said uh, helped in a great, in, in, to a great extent. So he smiled and shook my hand. We prayed, and uh, everything seemed to be going fine. Now what I'm going to tell you now, I found out after he dismissed me. Sometime between that meeting on December the 12th, and January the 16th, when I was dismissed from the faculty, someone wrote Dr. Robertson four or five letters being very ugly and critical of him, of the school, of the faculty, and uh, saying that they were weak and, and a number of other things and signed my name to him. Now, I did not know about the letters until after I was fired, two weeks after I was fired. So Dr. Robertson took, took it for granted that I did write him. He never confronted me with the evidence and asked me if I did write him. So, and I did not write them. Of course, uh, I don't feel too bad. Uh, someone wrote a letter and signed Paul's name to it. So, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm not anywhere near the man Paul was, so I don't have too much right to complain. But uh, he called me in his office and said, Now, uh, son, uh, some things have come up, and I feel like I have to dismiss you. Uh, some people have said that you would be a lot happier somewhere else than here, which in essence was probably the truth, because now that I'm out, I feel free. But uh, he said, uh, some people think you'd feel better down at Dr. Ruckman's school. I, I don't know why that always comes up. I guess it always will, but it doesn't really bother me. But uh, this is what he said to me in closing, which, has, which I have never been able to figure out, Dr. Ruckman. He said, now, I know what you believe, and I know especially what you believe about the King James Bible, and you're absolutely correct in what you believe. He said, I don't want you to ever change any of your beliefs. I want you to stand like a rock and preach the Bible and win souls. He said, because what you believe is right. Now, here's a man that I love and admire as much as any man in the Lord. I really do. But when he dismissed me, he's sitting there telling me that it, what I believe is exactly right, and yet dismissing me because I believe it. I told my wife that summer that if it cost me my job, I would not bend on the King James Bible. I guess the devil or one of his demons overheard it and said, well, we'll just see about that. But uh, by the grace of God, and I say that seriously, simply and only by God's omnipotent grace, he gave me the courage and the grace to stand for what I believe in. But I know now, from your church history tapes, I see exactly how schools go down. The school was founded and stood like a rock on the King James. And eventually over these years, they have gone from a, a evangelism to education there now Tennessee Temple University and uh, they're borderline between education and culture in the next few years they'll be into culture and after that apostasy and uh, after that it'll be all over so from my own personal viewpoint I see exactly what you said on those tapes and what I've read in books and seen from history that's how things go down